hand on my fucking stick. Murder, murder, that's what I'm thinking of. Ain't nobody gonna get stuck out from the man up above. Low, low, that what everybody say. But should I chill? I might get killed by ease through the day. I the him is for murder. Huh? The U is for you. you. The R for recognizing the D is for do. The E is for everybody. So raise up, bitch. I already took the way. That I hit them snitch. So take this out, fool. Catch me if you can. Got yeah. this nigga on his knees. Well, the fish and his motherfucker said, man, I'm worried about his life. I say, if you fucking pocket. So I can make a move. I see some people fucking shocking. I walked away with that fucking thing in my hand. Yes, my man, he gave me up quick as he can. I'm a bloody minded nigga, nigga. I keep that fucking trick. Like most of if you move, nigga, you meet your fucking grave. I ain't playing what I'm saying, nigga. I'm telling the truth. Made the wrong move and I'm pumping it too. You done met the wrong fucking nigga at the wrong fucking time. And ain't no time to rewind, cause I'm always in mine. And I'm a creep, creep, creep every time. I'm smoking hoes and everything. I say, fuck it, she looking fine and she dying. So get that in your head. And have a seat, and you ain't got a pee. It's like a message. Murder, murder, we murder, motherfucker. Yeah, we murder, motherfucker. This is Cali. And this Cali, your shit is a lifestyle. You know, from 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 the penitentiary to to that cobra, or to these same streets around you. Got a lot of blood. I lost a lot of blood back here. You know, this, this passion, when you hear somebody say Cali, yo, it ain't much about bragging and, and you know, putting fear in motherfuckers, you heard me? It's just a lifestyle that we've been taught since the 60s. If you do your history, you will see the Cali, yo, has been putting pressure on the city of New Orleans since the 50s. You know, a lot of dudes I heard about, Nick DiBalo and Terror, pop, you know, um, you know, like Randall Slim, you know, and it's our generation, Doug, Wayne, Wango, Spin, Chill, you know, like, it was a fucking lifestyle, you understand? Cut Boys is a crew that was called BTG, Back to Town Gangsters, but was later changed to Cut Boys by C. Murder to help clean up the deadly persona the BTG had across the city, but it didn't help, it actually made it worse. BTG had been under federal investigation for years after the feds found they were connected to drug kingpin Richard Scardi Pena. Most if not all BTG members were strong arms for the drug overlord. The FBI and DEA would eventually put a dent in BTG's armor when they had taken down Kingpin Richard Pena, who was of Dominican ethnic with Colombian and Mexican cartel ties, who ran his empire from Miami, Houston, Boston, Louisiana, and Puerto Rico. Pena was the main supplier to BTG with heroin, cocaine, marijuana, and to be his muscle in the streets. Troy T. Dub Watts, younger brother of Randall Watts, was arrested four months after Pena and added to the Pena organization drug indictments. A month before Troy Watts was arrested, his older brother Randall Watts was gunned down in front of Rose Tavern Bar in the Kaleo Projects, which, where he was later immortalized by a huge mural on its exterior wall. CNN would even put his funeral on national news. And although his brother, Troy Watts refused to attend his brother's funeral, it was rumored that he hired out of town hitmen from Miami. He was acquainted with to bodyguard his family while they were attending the funeral. With Kaleo Slim gone and his younger brother behind bars, BTG took a stumble. But within one month of his arrest, Watts and the BTG gang took aim at Gangster and the original Hot Boys, a once friend turned enemy, and younger brother of Cash Money Records, Birdman and Slim, as a suspect in the killing of Randall Watts, along with the St. Bernard Project Hardheads, a longtime reveal who they had just squashed a three-year-long battle. No one ever claimed responsibility for the killing of Randall Kaleo Slim Watts to this day. New Orleans Police Department had been put on high alert for the new BTG was going to seek retribution for their fallen gang member. In June of 1997, Terrence Gangsta Williams' mother was shot up outside her home while sitting in the driver's seat of one of Gangster's cars, and only two days later his brother was shot up while riding in Gangster's Infinity QX4. The violence had to stop, 
wrote New Orleans Police Superintendent Richard Penningtin to the FBI and DEA agents in a five-page letter to Washington. Pennington had advised the FBI and DEA that they needed to find a way to get Watts off the streets in order to end the bloodshed in his city. The feds had admitted that none of their witnesses wanted to flip against the drug kingpin Richard Pena as long as Watts was free, believing that the relationship Pena and Watts had, the drug lord would only have to get word to Watts to silence a witness or their families, and those orders would be followed. It took four more months before they would actually charge him. Until then the battle raged on. Till this day no one knows the real reason the Cut Boys and the Hot Boys had a falling out. Was it Yellow Boy of UNLV? Yellow Boy and T-Dub were close friends, even before Yellow Boy was a rapper signed to Cash Money's label. Even on the song, Melf Mac Callio from UNLV's album, Yellow Boy recounts a situation he had because of girl he was messing with, jealous boyfriend tried to kill him. Yella ended up ganging up with Watts to retaliate against his would-be attacker. Weeks before Yellow Boy died, he would call on his childhood friend once again, this time not for drama. Yellow Boy wanted to sign to Master P's No Limit Records. This was before Soldier Slim, Mystical, or Snoop had migrated over to No Limit Records. What's acting as his manager did speak to Master P on Yellow Boy's behalf and was in negotiations for a deal with Master P when on April 5th, 1997 yellow boy was shot and killed uptown rumors quickly spread around town as to the reason of his death including alleged insurrection and unpaid royalties from cash money but his label mate lilia from unlv would later put that rumor to rest Or was there something more sinister and deeper to the fallout? This dude named Nate, he was from the St. Thomas Project. He had ties to Calio through Levi, who was BTG. He was a Calio dude all day. Well, Nate had a dope shop on Philip and Clara, and the hot boys was the niggas who was running a shop for him. Some kind of way, one of the hot boys shot Levi by accident during a, a jack plate went wrong or something. I mean, that was the rumor anyway. Cali niggas ain't like that. They ain't like that somebody from the Magnolia had to kill their partner, even if it was accident or not. At the end of the day, they blame Nate for it. Then, a little while after, the high boys had a mentor uh, named Lesser Duplessis. And just so happened, he ended up getting killed. And Lesser Duplessis and Calio Slim were jammed tight. It was partners. Yeah, I mean, they was hanging together every day. So, once again, they blame Nate. So the Calio started plotting on Nate. 
But the hot boys say they would they would rather die from Nathan against Cali Hill. And everything was was kind of low key at first. And it was like 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 a calm before the storm. Then it just broke loose because another guy was killed who was from out the Cali Hill. They called him fool. much shoot on sight. After losing Levi and Fool, bodies just started dropping. I live right on the, at the time of the parkway and we was kind of in between where the Magnolia come through and the Calio come through. But we know we was like, like neutral to all that. But we knew that during the beef, when things got hot and heavy, especially after Mosquito had got killed, Gangsta had kind of ran to uh, Tennessee to lay low for a while till the heat get down. And the dudes out the Cali Ghost that it was just riding, riding, and riding, and looking for him. And when they found out that he had went to Tennessee, they shot his mama and his brother. And that was like, nigga, you got to come back in town, nigga, because we just popped your family. So it was pretty much whatever at that time. At the same time that they was looking for gangster, they were also going through the St. Bernard Project, laying them dudes down too, because they really didn't know where the person was from who had killed Randall Watts. So they pretty much was just had two, three targets at the same time. And if you know the Calio dudes, it's like a lot of them dudes and all of them killers. I mean, they all on hang together all the time, but all of them dudes was like known for putting in work. FBI agent Michael Timko, who was agent in charge of the Richard Pena organization's case and received credible information from a paid informant that on July 4th, 1997, the Cali Yo was plotting to ambush the entire cash money record roster at the 1108 canal street concert venue where cash money records was throwing a fourth of july celebration concert the cali yo knew that baby from cash money was harboring terence gangster williams and it was an attempt to get gangster to come out of hiding members of cali yo btg gang were followed by dea agents to the gun show in kenner louisiana only a day before the concert where they were flashing large sums of cash and buying crates of ammunition. One salesman told DEA that those guys just bought $15,000 worth of guns and bullets, mostly 223 assault rifles and at least one silencer for a Mac 11 pistol. The FBI are obligated by law to inform any civilian of imminent danger to their well-being before the act occurs. Calls to Cash Money Records office weren't answered by FBI and DEA. They had no choice but to arrest Troy T. Dub Watts to prevent a mass shooting and possible multiple murders. Watts was arrested on July 4, 1997, only hours before the concert would commence. Watts was charged with conspiracy to possess cocaine, first-degree murder on a federal witness, and attempt murder on Terrence Gangsta Williams' mother. The feds wanted to bring down the whole Cali 
Hill when they picked up T Dub. But he kept it 100 and didn't bring down the yo with him. All the homies were safe. But the Calio was feeling it because they ain't had no more blood. So they started doing the wild things back to where they were originally was doing. Jacking niggas, snatching niggas, smacking niggas. It just was like, fuck it. Get it how you live. And somewhere along the line, see, murder must have got word. And he came back to the project and kind of bought that money factor back in it. And it was good. A lot of people out the city not gonna want to admit it. But nobody ain't wanna go back down to Cali, yo. You ain't wanna go back down to go unless you know somebody. You ain't really wanna go back to doing nothing else but just getting what you gonna get and leave. And it was a whole city thing. Everybody know. Don't go in the Cali.